In this video, I'm going to show how having excessive hamstring flexibility as displayed through a straight leg raise test negatively impacts your ability to breathe with your diaphragms. And if you cannot breathe with your diaphragms, you cannot expand your rib cage appropriately during inhalation. So the only way to get air in is by using your neck and your lower back muscles. And the problem with that is it's dysfunctional and it puts you into a state of extension and extension means tension. And when you're tense, you cannot relax and your body becomes restricted and cannot move in the most athletic way that you're capable of. Our hamstrings are our grounding muscles. When you are walking and your heel hits the ground on either side, when you're, let's just say your left heel, when your left heel hits the ground, your brain senses pressure from the ground pushing up underneath your left heel. And when that occurs, your brain knows to activate the left hamstring, which then pulls the pelvis back into a stabilized position when your weight is on that foot. In this picture, you'll see that my client has excessive straight leg raise range of motion. Her hamstrings are showing too much range of motion on both sides. Now, the problem is this. I know that her pelvis is forward on both sides. So if you want to think of an anterior pelvic tilt on both sides, if that's easier to conceptualize, that's fine. In PRI, we call it the PEC pattern. Both iliums are forward. That causes an increased curve in the lower back. In that position, the attachment site, so the hamstring's coming up and attaches to the base of the pelvis. In that position, when the pelvis is forward, that attachment site, can you see, oh no, hold it right here. That attachment site moves back and up, further away from the ground, which lengthens the hamstrings. When you lie someone down, if a pelvis is forward, that straight leg raise should stop at about 65, 70 degrees. It really shouldn't go much further than that because of the position of the pelvis itself. I'm not really worried about 75 to 80, but when you are at 90 degrees or past 90 degrees and her, her leg really could probably go touch her head. Um, if you're at that range of motion on a pelvis that's tilted forward, something has gone wrong. Those hamstrings have so much flexibility to them that they're legitimately, they don't, they cannot contract. When she's upright and walking, because remember PRI is walking and breathing, when she's upright and walking, her muscles have no time to contract to be, to be used effectively in the gait cycle. So every time her, her foot hits the ground, hamstring does not kick in because it's just so out of touch with the rest of her body. And when that occurs, she now has to use her quadriceps and her hip flexors to control her forward movement. So why does this matter? Because someone who has a straight leg raise that is excessive like that on a patterned body, that means by definition, she does not have hamstrings to support and stabilize and ground the pelvis. If she doesn't have hamstrings, you know she won't have adductors either, so she cannot adduct each side of the pelvis or adduct the leg, however you want to look at it. And she'll be relying on three different muscle groups to really stabilize that pelvis, all of which lead to extension and keep her in extension, which is the posture that we're trying to get people out of and the posture that causes pain. She'll be relying on one, hip flexors in front, yeah, in front, uh, two, lower back muscles in the back on top, and three, pelvic floor muscles. And that's a huge problem when it comes to breathing. As I've mentioned in other videos, the pelvic floor is the trampoline off of which you expand your rib cage. So when you inhale, if this is the pelvic floor diaphragm or pelvic floor muscles, and this is the respiratory diaphragm, as you inhale, they both move down. As you exhale, they both move up. So you, they move down as you inhale and your rib cage expands. They move up as you exhale and the rib cage returns to its starting position. When that mechanism is no longer working because the pelvic floor muscles have become overused to help stabilize your pelvis in an upright position because you lost your adductors and your hamstrings, you can no longer get air into your rib cage because you can't expand the rib cage. The diaphragm, when the diaphragm contracts and moves down, or plural, when the diaphragms move down as you inhale, that movement of the, of the diaphragms would expands the rib cage. But the diaphragms can't pump like pumping as pumping muscles, as breathing muscles, if the pelvic floor cannot contract with them. The problem is in this position, the, the pelvic floor muscles are acting like uh, stabilizer muscles. They are stabilizing this pelvis in an upright position. And when they can't be used as a trampoline, 
the respiratory diaphragms can't pump correctly. You can't expand your rib cage correctly because the rib cage depends on the on the uh, the movement of the diaphragms. So the only way you can get air in is by using your neck and extending your back. And that is the problem. Now, if you watch this video, what you're going to see is she's going to try to blow up a balloon in a standing position. We also tried having her blow up a balloon in a uh, lying down supine with her feet on the wall and then her feet on the floor. She could not blow up the balloon. Now you're going to see I put her in a standing position to see if I could ground her better so that her brain could sense the ground more so it would give her more power to blow up the balloon. As you'll see, she uh, cannot do it. She gets a little bit of air in the balloon, but that's it. And she cannot open it. She cannot, she cannot blow up the balloon whatsoever. Now, all I did was put her on a piece of, of, well, on a piece, on a wooden crate, had her sit, and watch what happens now. And she'll take a second breath. So my client had no problem blowing up the balloon when she was sitting on the, on the wooden crate, but if she was standing or lying down, she could not blow up the balloon. And what is the discrepancy? I believe it comes down to pressure, pressure regulation and what she's sensing. If she's standing, her legs are essentially not there <laughs> because she had no stability through her hamstrings. So without stability through, because the hamstrings are gone, her pelvic floor has to tighten up to hold her up and now she can't expand her rib cage. When I put her on, so in a sense, she's ungrounded when she's standing. Her brain is not sensing the ground because she has no hamstrings. If you sit her on the crate, now she feels her sit bones and her brain senses her sit bones on the wooden crate. And because she ex feels that pressure there, We've essentially cut off the lower half of her body. We cut off her legs, and now she only has to manage the upper half. And her brain senses that pressure. The pelvic floor then relaxes because it, because her brain senses that pressure. And once the pelvic floor relaxes, she can now expand her rib cage with inhalation. She gets enough air in, and then she can blow up the balloon. And that is really what I think is behind uh, what you just saw. And if you, in case you think that this is, I'm just making this up. This actually comes from the founder of PRI. He used to work before he found before he became PRI. He worked with Vietnam veterans who had who were amputees, and he had to fix them. He had to prepare their bodies to uh, accept prostheses, like fake legs. And he made observations about how these people could manage their body depending on what they had or didn't have available to them. And these people didn't have legs but he had to improve their function. And one of the ways that I suppose he found out he could do that was by having them sense their sit bones and that, their sit bones, which is where the attachment site for the hamstrings are, uh, even though they didn't have hamstrings. But when they, had, when they were able to sense those sit bones, they were actually able to normalize their breathing and move their the, the remaining parts of their body better. So this doesn't come out of nowhere. So how am I starting with her? Hamstrings. On my website, the beginner program, I have examples of hamstring techniques. That's what she's doing for her right hamstring and her left hamstring because she needs both. She'll have a ball between her knees to get her adductors engaged also. And we are starting off with trying to stabilize that pelvis and she's gonna be doing it for a long time, but then also integrating it with the balloon so that we can get the muscles to stabilize the pelvis so the pelvic floor muscles don't have to do it so they can relax. And now they can act as a trampoline again off of which we can expand that rib cage during inhalation. And once we can do that, she'll have a very good exhalation with some power so that she can control that airflow going out so that she'll become more grounded and a more stable person.